Hey, this is Rob with Old Guy Tech TV, and I'm here with Rich Williams, under Sheriff Eldorado County, and I want to thank first of all the sheriff's department for allowing rich and to come in and spend a little bit of time with old guy tech tv as you know every month we like to get him in and talk about what's uh, what's going on what's happening what's on the radar what issues they may have and we're lucky enough today to have under sheriff rich williams with us and i think you guys are going to find some great stuff and learn some things that i didn't know and i'm all excited about it and i really hope you've enjoyed the show recently we did change the shifts and that was to save money That's what mm -hmm. it came down to uh, when the sheriff first came in office we had an overtime problem and um, we were up to almost a thousand hours a week in overtime and with that type of situation you either have a staffing problem or you have an overtime problem and the sheriff directed us to find a vendor to come in a private consultant to look at all the shifts that we had and figure out what we could do to change those to reduce costs. Mm -hmm. And since then, about 90% of the agency has changed, we've changed their shifts. And uh, we're, we're less than half of what the overtime was two and a half, three years ago. Oh, great, great. So it's uh, uh, constantly watching the operation and uh, making sure we're heading in the right direction. So how is uh, today's staffing level compared to previous years? I mean, are we, are you staffed? Are you still have openings? How this, how's that going? We, we always have openings in, in an agency of our size. Um, we're shooting for having none, but that's, that's kind of a tough thing to do because of all the processes that different folks have to go to to get hired or go through. Right. Um, some of the positions require a written exam uh, an oral interview, psychological exam, a medical exam, and, and those type of things before you could even get hired. So it takes time. Yes. Uh, as far as numbers go, we're about 25 less than we had in 2008. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're still less than we had five years ago. Okay. Um, but we have changed the way we staff. We've reduced the number of supervisors, we've reduced the number of managers, and we've increased the line staff. Uh, Sheriff Diagostini was able to secure additional positions that actually affect the community. Mm -hmm. uh, one was an elder abuse detective position. We went to the Board of Supervisors, spoke to them about it, and they agreed that it's an issue that we needed to face and uh, address. So we got a new detective position. Sheriff also obtained a resident deputy position, which we have yet to fill, but okay. we're working on that. And that would be in what area? Uh, the first area that the sheriff wants to go in is what we call the 40 area, which is Georgetown, mm -hmm. um, basically North County. Right. And uh, we'd like to get someone out there who's living and working in the community, and we're working on that. Good. Um, mm -hmm. And another position the sheriff was able to obtain was a sergeant position for the Lake Tahoe Narcotics Task Force. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's looking at things that actually affect people, affect the taxpayers and the folks that live here in the county. Yeah, you know what makes El Dorado County so unique is the, how, people don't realize how large your county is and how much rural area that we have and how hard it is to get the staffing that you need to pr protect everybody and get out there. I mean. You know, take a look, folks, at the at the map of El Dorado County, and you will see how difficult it is uh, with the budget that we have to get the amount of guys out that we need to have. Agreed, I guess, huh? No doubt about it. It is a big <laughs> county, and weather affects our ability to uh, respond to certain areas in the winter. Right. right. Um, we have a little bit of everything, as you know. We yeah. have our rivers. We have our lakes. Uh, we have the mountains. Um, it sure is a beautiful place, and I, you know, I really enjoy it. It is probably one of the most diverse counties in, in the state. I'm going to say, I'm prejudiced. I think El Dorado County is pretty damn good because it, it depends on what you want. From snow to sun, you got it all. True. <laughs> it's there. Very so, true. so it's very difficult to get, um, to get the, the numbers of officers at certain times with shift levels into the right location. So I know that you've been working di diligently uh, trying to get that all done. And um, do you see, um, I, and I don't know how the budget process works 
with the um, Board of Supervisors. Can you talk about that a little bit and how that part works? Sure. Um, most recently, what we, we did what we call addenda, and that was for the 12-13 uh, budget, would end, which ended July 3rd or June 30th uh, of this year. Uh, and that was basically wrapping up the budget for last year. Any changes, last minute changes that came in and so on. Where it begins is mid-year for us. In January, we do a mid-year report to see where we're at and how things are going to wrap up. And then we start working our projections for the next year. Um, at the Sheriff's Office, we involve our staff down to the sergeant level to put the budgets together because they know their areas best. They know their functions best. And it's our, our budget is always based on the budget prior. Mm -hmm. So we look right. at last year's budget and how we did there. Can we reduce costs in any other areas, or do we need to increase costs in some areas to respond to right. uh, different issues? So uh, that process starts in January. The sergeants, the lieutenants start working on their budget for their areas. The division commanders, which are the captains, put all that together, and then they work with me, and we work with the finance uh, chief, mm -hmm. uh, and we put together a proposed budget. And then we go to the sheriff. And we show him the numbers, talk about programs, talk about directions the sheriff wants to go, and he makes the final decisions on what we're going to ask for in our budget and where we're going to spend the money based on what he thinks the sheriff's office needs to do. Right. So then, uh, then he, the sheriff, has to go go into the supervisors, and it's a budget battle. I mean, we know every year the supervisors have it seems like some kind of battle one another they have a lot of departments to you know to fight with so everybody's trying to get their pound of flesh so to speak so right. i know that the sheriff's been very successful in uh, reducing some of the waste and expenses that weren't necessary i know he did he did really well with that um you know let me ask you this because this was a question that I'm, i would have asked john but i'm going to ask you too because i don't know how involved you are with the concealed weapons permit issue but one of the things i get uh almost weekly is the problem with the amount of time it takes to process a concealed weapons permit and i don't know if that's in your preview or not but can you can you speak about sure. the fact yeah sure and and it's uh not only do we hear it from you rob we hear it from a lot of folks who want to exercise their Second Amendment rights, who want to, want to carry a concealed weapon. Over the last couple of years, we've taken different steps to try to speed that process up. Uh, most recently, we've involved our STAR volunteers mm -hmm. to help in the interview process. That alone is going to reduce the time by about three weeks. Um, wow. There are variables that are in the process that we had no control over, like the fingerprinting. Um, we could do a fingerprint scan and send it in, and we could get it back in 10 minutes, or we can get it back in 10 weeks. Uh -huh, right. We don't know. And there's not a number we could call to speed up the process. It's just completely out of our hands. But with the volunteers involved, um, Good. our estimate, uh, I, I spoke to our records folks about this who handle a lot of that, and uh, they estimate that the total time has been reduced by three to four weeks. Good, because when John was in here last, the sheriff was in here last, he said to tell everybody 90 days. That did seem like a, a, an awful large number. Can we can we say now it's maybe down to a 60-day window? You know, I'd, I'd like to be able to say that, yeah. but there are some variables in there. I, yeah. I think that the sheriff's goal is, is right on, 90 days. Yeah. Um, sooner if we can. Yeah. Um, and I also looked in the concealed weapons you know, since Sheriff D'Agostini came in the office, we've more than doubled the number of concealed weapons uh, licenses that are out there. So it's been uh, it's been quite an impact on our administrative staff to get that done. Yeah, I know in the beginning you got swamped, and, right. and the, the previous administration was not really pro-firearms uh, at all, where John's the other way around. And, of course, everybody welcomed him. 
uh, for that. So he did a, he did a great job in that. And I understand the difficulty when you start getting, especially in the beginning, now that we're getting into three years, the numbers I'm sure are getting a little shorter. But at first, I know you guys are slammed with applicants. And, sure. and it takes time to get through all of that. I, I understand that. Right. Hey, did, did, does the government shutdown uh, have any effect on the Sheriff's Department? I, I have no idea if that... We haven't had any effect as of yet. Okay. Uh, I, I th think it would depend on how long it goes. I mean, we do have some federal grants and things that come through, but uh, on the day-to-day -day operations, it has not affected us, and I, I really don't think it will. Okay. Uh, so it, it would probably be the only thing that you would work with on a federal level, I think, and I don't know what your involvement on the federal level is, um, but but you so far you haven't seen anything no. that's affected locally. Yeah? No. Okay. All right. No, and... And uh, if I know Sheriff Diagostini, he's not going to let anything affect our operations. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He'll make sure that we get our job done. Good, good. Um, so uh, do you get a, a chance and, and go out with the troops and see how the guys are doing? And I do. Work with them? Yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. Not enough. Uh, most of my uh, the things I do are at, at the desk mm -hmm. or walking around and, and um, dealing with people. I do get out. I've been out on patrol. I go out on boat patrol. Uh, oh, you want the fun stuff. Yeah, I go out on the fun <laughs> stuff. And, and some of them not so fun stuff sure. that happen in the middle sure. of the night that, uh, where we have to respond. But uh, I do get out when I can. Um, but uh, I have a pretty busy schedule, and yeah. so does the sheriff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I appreciated it so much, your ability to fill in for a little bit with... Uh, with the, for the sheriff. Not at all. My, yeah. my pleasure. I appreciate that. So um, do you have uh, anything that uh, that you might like to talk about for the public that, uh, you know, is something that information that you'd like to get out there? Well, you know, I'd like to, we were we were talking about the budget earlier, and right. I'd like to touch on a few things. You talked about the budget fight. Since Sheriff Diagostini has been in office, we haven't had a budget fight. And uh, due to, due to the, his direction and leadership, We've had budget surpluses every year that go back to the county. So we haven't had to fight uh, for every dollar because we've been giving the county back money every year. Our surplus from last year's budget was almost $4 million. Wow. And, um, and that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So, uh, you know, our, our goal is to continue to do that. And some folks might say, well, okay, maybe they're giving you too much money or something like that, and that's not the case. We have to plan for the what-ifs, for the things that could happen or might happen. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just want to touch base on the budget there and, and, le and let the folks know that uh, we've had significant surpluses in, the, in, the, uh, in our budget that have gone back to the county. Um, you know, one of the things that the sheriff's done of many in the last few years to try to open up the agency and one of the, and what we're doing now is a, a series of community meetings they're called they're called we work for you mm -hmm. and uh, the sheriff uh, along with me and the rest of our command staff go to each supervisory district and we talk about the sheriff's office not many people know what you get for your taxes right I can uh, say that. Yeah, I <laughs> so so we bring uh, our folks to let them know exactly what you're getting for your money. And the sheriff's office is very com complex. We have almost 400 employees that do various different, various things. So uh, the sheriff wants folks to know, and that's why we're out there, that we do work for you. I am your under sheriff. Our deputies are your deputy sheriffs. And, and we're, we're trying to move in that direction. Sheriff's opened up the ride along program. If you wanna come out and see how uh, our folks work, how our deputies interact and get things done, come on in and put an application in and let's get you out on the street. It will uh, be an eye-opening experience. Absolutely. You. I think everybody should. I did it a number of times. Uh, I did it once when I was sat on the grand jury and then I had another opportunity to, to ride along. And uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's nice to be able to go and see the process and be part of the process. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would have to agree. If you guys out there have an interest at all about the actual workings and how things are done, 
do go to the Sheriff's Department, get the application, put it in, and see if you know you might like it. You also have a Citizens Academy. You want to talk about that a little bit? That is one of our our, our best programs. And uh, folks come in and they sign up. I think it's about 12 weeks. Uh, once a week, they have a uh, uh, multi-hour get-together, and we go over in detail everything that we do at the sheriff's office. Uh, patrol, canines, you, you walk through the jails, you uh, see how we do everything. Narcotics, detectives, uh, the, many, the many things that we do. And most folks come out of there and they're really appreciative of, uh, of the information that they get. Sure. And uh, they have a better understanding of the sheriff's office. Again, it's that we work for you um, and we try to be transparent and uh, have an open door policy. If people want to come in and find out about something, come on in and ask. And we can we can get that information to you. And you know, folks, that's one of the things that I have found different uh, in this case is that the, the sheriff and the under sheriff have an open door policy. And really, if all you need to do is call and make an appointment, and they're more than happy to talk to you. And uh, you can't say that in a lot of the the bigger areas or a lot of the other sheriffs, they don't necessarily want to see the, your, the constituents, but uh, uh, I know in our department they do. John is uh, the undersheriff as well as the sheriff, have both been open to me at any time, and so that's important, so take advantage of that. So the academy has worked out really well, we've got the ride-alongs going really well. Hey, how are things going at the jail? Things are going very well at the jail. Um, Everyone's heard of the AB 109, mm -hmm. the uh, shift of state inmates to the, the local facilities. Luckily here in El Dorado County, we have room at the end. Mm -hmm. There are vacant beds there now. I think that's a direct result of the type of people who live in our, in our county. We have good, hardworking folks. Our jails are not full with criminals. Um, so there has been some impact with AB 109. The number of 109 inmates, we call them, varies from day to day, but it's averaging about 100. Uh, our capacity is around 450 employee or, uh, inmates total right. between two jails. Um, those folks in the jail do a fantastic job, and they're, they kind of are the unsung heroes mm -hmm. um, because you don't see them. Right. And they're doing, uh, they're doing a difficult job dealing with some of the worst folks we have in the county, mm -hmm. and uh, they do a great job. And, um, I have nothing but praise for the folks in the jail because they do a great job. The captain keeps an eye on things, the lieutenants keep it running, the shift sergeants, and then the line staff who actually get the work done 24-7. Right. Uh, yep. They are always there and it's like running two small cities mm -hmm. with, uh, with all the inmates that we do have. Absolutely, and uh, you're right, yeah, the correctional officers are unsung heroes, and uh, those guys work really hard and get very little attention, so that's a shout out to you guys out there working hard, good job, we really appreciate that. And so the, so the jail, I know that you uh, house some prisoners from some other rural locations, uh, that helps we a do. little bit too, right? We do, yeah. and uh, a few years back, the uh, the sheriff was interested in renting some beds out mm -hmm. to some of those counties that have excess inmates that would either have to release the inmate um, or something like that. Um, we've been renting beds to other counties. We rent to Amador County, Shasta County, uh, Federal Marshals, and Alpine County. And uh, that has brought in a significant amount of money that we put back into the jail system for maintenance needs, things uh, that come up that we didn't sure. budget for, right. equipment, those kind of things. So uh, we still have beds open and we rent beds. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know how long that's going to you know, continue. You never continue. know, right? Yeah. It could change yeah. overnight. But uh, uh, the sheriff took advantage of a situation and it's brought money into the county coffers. You know, um, Governor Brown, I know, has been trying to deal with the realignment issue at all. I, and, and I'm going to be honest, I hadn't followed it a whole lot. How How is that in his office, and how is that working? I think he's had a couple of decisions against him, you know, as far as the, the numbers in jails, because I know they were supposed to be uh, reduced, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's 
a lot of history. The, the state's been sued over the last 10 or 15 years about their capacities. Um, the state's won some decisions. They've lost some decisions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I personally believe that the AB 109 is not the right direction to go. It's a, not the right direction to dump state inmates into the county facilities. Um, there was an immediate impact when they did 109. It did drop the populations of the state prisons because we weren't sending them bodies. Mm -hmm. But it didn't last. Right. And they're getting back up to close to their capacity or beyond it. And um, I, I just don't think shifting that responsibility on the counties is the right way to go. Right. Right. Well, I guess we're looking again. There was a, uh, for a number of years, where we were not building any new prisons. And I guess the, <laughs> the state is looking at having to do that again. And I know there's some private uh, facilities as well True. that have popped up. And uh, I don't know how much that's helped or not. But it's, it's an interesting scenario. There's a lot of people in the state don't realize that we actually have private prisons. It's true. There, there are many in the state, uh, many uh, counties pay to send their inmates there. And, and that's one of the things I understand that the governor's looking at is uh, sending state inmates there or sending more inmates back to the counties and paying us uh, to house their inmates. Right. Um, you know, I, I just don't know. I think, it's, I think they're just shuffling it around and not addressing the actual uh, issues mm -hmm. personally. Uh, I, I think they need to build more prisons. As our population increases, we're going to need more beds. The things that are being done now, I think, are short-term uh, uh, fixes that won't last. Well, they're myopic. I mean, they're not looking down the road as exactly. far as, hey, the population in California is growing. Uh, I, you know, and it seems like as the population grows and as we get um, the drug issues that's involved and then some of the violent issues and all that is growing along with the population, which people forget comes along with it, as well as one of the things that nobody talks about is the uh, problems around the Indian casinos. Uh, there's a lot of crime in true. those areas. That's and true. You know what? You never hear it. You see those nice commercials about, you know, come on down to this casino. We're great. But along with that comes the criminal element as well. So, you're right. you know, and, and your department has to provide that protection as well. Uh, you know, every casino is different. Some of them have their own um, Bureau of Indian Affairs and Law Enforcement, most of the time, though, it's still the sheriff. That's true, and, and uh, we do get uh, a certain amount of money from the tribe every year mm -hmm. to pay for deputies responding, and um, we have a good re relationship with Red Hawk. And uh, on the other hand, you're right. Casinos do attract a certain type of people right. sometimes. Right, right, yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean people that go there aren't good, but there are some that... Uh, uh, attract you know a certain type of folks that use drugs uh, we get all types of calls at, at the casino but we do work very closely with their leadership and uh, and we get the job done out there yeah that's good yeah I know it has to be done so appreciate that sure. by the way folks uh, we're close to our 30 minute mark and if anybody's out there 621 1210 this is your chance to ask the under sheriff any burning questions you may have and why I take this break, I want to go ahead and just acknowledge uh, CalNet Internet. Uh, they provided some of our bandwidth. Make sure that you look at our e-blasts and you go visit CalNet. Thank you, CalNet, for providing that uh, bandwidth for us and so that we could get this show out. So, Rich, uh, anything else that's on your uh, want to talk about list right now? You know, I, I really can't think of anything, uh, but, but I can tell you that uh, with Sheriff D'Agostini's leadership, uh, the sheriff's department is heading in the right direction, I think. Uh, we're be becoming more efficient and more effective and uh, more connected with the community, the people that we work for. Um, I can see it when the deputies get out of the car. People uh, on the street tell me that they're very pleased with uh, our deputies uh, and the work that they're doing and that they're, actually, they're taking the extra time to uh, address people's concerns. And, um, and that's the way we want to go mm -hmm. because we do work uh, for the folks in this county. It's not, you know, there are some agencies that are out there that are kind of an us versus them right. Uh, right. situation. And um, that's not the El Dorado County Sheriff's Office, and we won't operate that way. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, one of the things that I noticed and I've had people mention to me too is that it, it, it that they're no longer afraid to wave at a deputy as he goes by. Uh, there was a period of time where you didn't even want to look at the car, <laughs> let alone, you know, wave and say hi. But the but the troops out there seem to be really working with the community, and I've heard nothing but positive out of the uh, the whole thing. You've got some great uh, leadership in there. Uh, your sergeants, your lieutenants, and captains are all doing a good job. So, I uh, I, I I think overall, and I, maybe I'm prejudiced, but I really think the Colorado County Sheriff's Department is doing a really good job. So, thank you uh, oh, you're welcome. No, but thank, thank you, you for your service. I mean, it's it, it takes guys like you and, and the sheriff and everybody working in that department to make it run as smooth as it does. And I think it's uh, I think it's really done well. And I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the sheriff's department coming in uh, once a month and talking about what's coming in. Maybe it'll be you again, Rich. Maybe it'll be John. Who Maybe knows? So. We'll get some more in here. But uh, what I want to do right now is just kind of wrap up and say, hey, I want to thank you out there for watching Old Guy Tech TV. This was uh, Law Enforcement Day here, and we had an opportunity to talk to Under Sheriff Rich Williams. And once again, thank you for watching Old Guy Tech TV. Thank <laughs> you.